Easter season is a time for pastors to play a little trick on people. I'm going to start early. Ha <laughs> ha. Good morning today. It, welcome to Beautiful Savior, our Redeemer Lutheran Church. Our uh, first Sunday in May, which is the fourth Sunday of Easter, which is also known as Good Shepherd Sunday. And so there are many references to sheep and shepherds in today's service. We begin with the song, Surely Goodness and Mercy. sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. For he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Let us come before God in true repentance, seeking forgiveness and amendment of our lives as we follow the Lord. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, old man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. Confess that we are indeed sinful. We do our pen and are truly sorry for these are our sins. Have mercy on us because of Jesus our good shepherd. Grant that by the working of the Holy Spirit we may follow where he leads until that time when we, by his grace, come to dwell in your house forever. God has promised forgiveness to those who repent of their sins and turn to him for grace. Therefore, as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, in his stead, and because he has commanded me to, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy. For the 
peace from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Since you have wakened from death the shepherd of your sheep. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading comes from Acts 2, verses 42 through 47. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. chapter 2, verses 19 through 25. For this is a gracious thing, when mindful of God one endures sorrows while suffering unjustly. For what credit is it if, when you sin and are beaten for it, you endure? But if when you do good and suffer for it, you endure, this is a gracious thing in the sight of God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you might follow in his steps. He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were strained like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise. The Holy Gospel of 
according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all of his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise you, o Christ. We confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Israel 
and Lebanon, the Middle East being more like uh, Iran, possibly Iraq, uh, and the Far East being the Oriental countries that we think of. But in the Near East, I understand that when one travels, as one approaches a village, you would probably see a large square type structure walled nearly all the way around with stones rolled roughly one upon another. You would also see a gate and perhaps more than one entrance into this enclosure. That square is empty throughout the day for the flocks have gone into the neighboring pastures but toward evening at certain seasons of the year all the shepherds bring their flocks to these enclosures to keep them safe for the night and there they are shut in for the night all together. One man might only have a few sheep and another man might also only have a few sheep and uh, then the more wealthy owners have larger flocks but all the sheep are enclosed together in this stone enclosure in the common community fold. Of course those people had never heard of social distancing at the time but they bring all their sheep in and together. When the morning comes the shepherd is up early with the sun. The gatekeeper is at the door and he recognizes the various sheep owners as they come to call their sheep and to fetch their flocks. One shepherd comes and he takes away his little herd. Then a little later another shepherd arrives and he leads away a large number or so. But in each case the shepherd has no trouble in separating his sheep from the rest in the fold. Now you and I would think it would be almost impossible to do such a thing. To look at a uh, flocks and flocks of sheep in an enclosure and to pick out which ones were mine and which ones were his. It would be looking like a needle. It would be like looking for a needle in a haystack. How would we even begin to divide those differing flocks? They all look the same. One sheep looks like another sheep to me, but the shepherd does it easily as he comes to the door of the fold. Now there are certain of the sheep that love him very much. They are accustomed to keep very near to his hand when he's with them and often get the choicest patches of grass. They leap up at the very sound of his footsteps. They recognize his person and they come quickly to the gate and are ready almost immediately to go out to the pastures with him. If any of you have a little dog at home, we can hear that dog whining and scratching at the door before we even get the door open. They've been aware that we've been there. They heard us when the car pulled up and that dog is just angry. So you can picture some of the sheep are just like that. Now when you get home, the cat doesn't care one bit that you came home. Have any of you ever had a cat greet you at the door? Uh, dogs, but dogs do that and sheep do that to their master. Then there are other sheep in the same fold, maybe even the larger part of the flock, that are not quite as eager. But the shepherd speaks and they recognize his voice. And when he proceeds to call them out by name, you can see those fleecy creatures recognizing the tones of his voice and responding to his call as readily as dogs with us know their master's voice and their own names. We've had it happen on occasion that the dog has taken out for a walk and or came outside when we got home from somewhere, the dog took off and uh, my wife was afraid he ran into the street and she begins calling him, Bridget, or calling her, Bridget, Bridget, and Bridget's not paying attention, she doesn't run around and she says, uh, you better call him, so I'll have to holler and say, Bridget, and the dog turns around and comes running back. So the dog knows that one of us means business and one of us will let her get away with more. So dogs recognize those type of things. They recognize, and so do sheep. We've tried this experiment with our dog and our cat. We will mention the name Bridget in our conversation, sometimes raising our voice, sometimes whispering, but whether or not we're whispering or we say it lightly, every time we say that word, Bridget, the dog's ear perk up, and they recognize her name. Now, the cat is a whole other story. It doesn't care how you say its name. It doesn't care if you break it into syllables. Mim or what? Our cat has two names, see, because it came with one name and the kids didn't want to name it that. They want to name it something else, so the cat may be confused by the name. 
It goes right on doing whatever it's doing, oblivious to the combination of vowels and consonants. I never even seen an ear perk up. The cat doesn't know its name. Sheep, though, like dogs, know their name and the voice of their master. We did used to have a cat, though. Every time you ran the can open, the cat would come running. So they do recognize some things, or maybe they're just ignoring people to let you know who's in charge. But dogs and sheep are similar in that they know their master's voice. Now that's exactly what the good shepherd does with his sheep. He comes to the door of the fold. Here we are this morning, like so many sheep in the enclosure. And I cannot tell, I cannot tell which ones of you are Christ's sheep and which ones are not. I can make no distinction between his chosen ones and the rest of mankind. Well, doesn't that prove that we're his pastor because we're here in church on a Sunday morning? No, it doesn't. There's all kinds of people that go to church for all different kinds of reasons. Some go because they have business connections there. Some go to church to make their husband or wife happy. Some go to church because that's what they've always done on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock their whole lives. There are some here. I think the devil goes to church more than some of our members. He loves to come to church and sow division in churches. And no, it's not your husband sitting next to you. But I cannot tell which ones are true Christ sheep and which ones are just other sheep in the fold. I can make no distinction between his chosen ones and the rest of mankind. But if the Lord himself should come and call, his chosen ones would hear his gracious voice when one by one he calls them to himself by baptism and instills faith in them. Or maybe they are now 50 years old or 18 and have never heard the old, old story of Jesus and his love. But suddenly at the age of 50 or 14 or whenever they've heard the story and believed the gospel and they come now when he calls. The gospel has gone out by radio or TV or some preacher behind the pulpit because their neighbor, their, their co-worker was dedicated enough to bring them to church. They had the chance to hear and to believe the gospel. They have heard the gospel and received it and they believe it, and then they are called out to come and join the master's flocks. Whatever else they may have been doing, when the sheep hear his voice, they rise up and follow him, for they know his voice, and he leads them out. We confess that belief often. As Lutherans, we confess that he does call, gather, and enlighten the whole Christian church on earth, and keeps it in the one true faith. We also believe, teach, and confess that he has called me by the gospel. So he has called us to himself. He takes us out to the pasture. He doesn't leave us. In fact, he has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. The Lord Jesus Christ has often come to us along the way in guidance. The psalm says, he leads me in the paths of righteousness. Many of us can say and testify to the fact that he has guided us through all the pathway of life. And as we look back, we can see God's guiding hand leading us down certain pathway. At certain times and at difficult turns of the road, he has come to us with consoling counsel and with such abounding compassion that we have blessed him and said, he has been truly near to me during this crisis or whatever it was. Maybe you have been in that place of sickness or great pain. Perhaps you have come through in your life some great abuse or great poverty. And if it had not been for the Lord, you feel like you wouldn't have made it thus far. Some of you this morning know what it's like to be deserted by your friends in the hour of the greatest need and have had to stand alone against all the howling storms around you, or so it seemed to you. But we never fully know Christ until such a time as that. We never realize the sweetness of his sympathetic companionship till he stands by us during a time like that. And we can say with Paul, Paul wrote, at my first trial no man stood with me, 
all men forsook me, but notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me. Yes, the Lord may be a long way off from the healthy and the strong sheep, but the good shepherd is always near to the sickly and the weak. And when the heart is breaking, Christ always comes. He knows all about, you know, Christ knows all about heartbreak and desertion and agony and bloody sweat. In all ways, he was, uh, he was uh, tempted like we are and yet without sin. So he can sympathize with us in our sorrows. And there is no hand so soft and tender and kind as that which was pierced for our transgression. So the Lord is with us, leading and guiding. And I may also add that our Lord is always with us in intercession as well. Well, what does that mean? His divine foresight is pleading for us about troubles that are yet to come. In January of this year, were any of you here thinking that the whole world could shut down? Every country locked down? I wouldn't have believed it. Yeah. But it didn't catch Jesus by surprise. Even then, he was pleading for it. I remember one time Jesus told Peter, Satan has desired to sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you, Peter, that you fail not. Isn't it great to know that despite the fact that we don't know what troubles lie ahead of us, we have one, the Son of the Father, who is pleading for us, interceding for us on a regular basis. So quickly does the careful love of Christ outstrip all other necessities that even the lightning fast wings of the earth enemy cannot fly so fast as the interceding love of our arch advocate, our chief helper, our dear friend. He's always with us, watching to see not only what we want, but also what we will want. I don't know about tomorrow. I don't know what the future holds. But I know who holds my hand, as the song says. Before Satan has even plucked his arrow from his quiver, and long before he has fitted it to his bow, Christ has already prepared that shield of interceding love that will guard us from his attacks. O oh, sheep of Christ, can there be any happier news for you than that the good sheep is all the good shepherd, I should say, is always with you? His sheep hear his voice when he calls them for particular service. Now we read in the book of Acts where the Lord says to the early church, Separate out for me Barnabas and Saul for the work whereunto I have called them. The Lord separated out some for his particular work. Sometimes there is a Sunday school teacher needed or wanted. And possibly there is someone here with many years of knowledge and experience who ought to be teaching a Bible class. Perhaps there is a man of business who, here, or a woman of business, who is very familiar with reconciling the books and can be of great service to the Lord's church. Some of you have never had an idea of what you can do for the Lord, and the way to find it out is to try and do something for the Savior. There are too many retired people among us. Yeah, I know we have some here that are of retirement age who go way above and beyond what they ought to do and parish couldn't make it, frankly, without them. But then there are others that feel that they are too old to participate and, and I say to you, come out of your hiding place, my dear friend. Be separated out for the Lord's work. I do pray for the Master to call you by your name so that you may consecrate your time, your talent, and your treasure to the work of the Lord. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out into wider spirit. Lastly, there is another call that I would be remiss in neglecting to speak about. There will soon come another call to every one of us, the call home to heaven. Jesus said, the day is coming when all who sleep in their graves shall hear my voice and come out. I know not to whom it may come this week or next, but I ask all of you, are you ready for it? See, because I can't judge your heart. I don't know. The Bible tells us to test ourselves whether we be in the faith or not. 
I'm sure there were some people here in March in the United States who never knew that they would never see May. Any one of us. But then there were thousands upon thousands who that fall into that category. I heard them saying a lot of commercials during these uncertain times. Have you heard that? And yet I say all time is uncertain. We don't never know what tomorrow holds. And we had a false sense of security. And so I ask you, are you ready? I can't judge you. I can't decide that for you. But check your heart. Are you ready should the shepherd call for you today? It will come, the call will come by him who loves you and who longs to have you where he is so that you may behold his glory. And it will come in a different, hundreds, thousands of different ways. There is an aged Christian who is dying of cancer. There are another who are greatly suffering from some other painful disease. Now, some have a heart attack and are quick to go. Someone went to bed in peace and woke up in the arms of Jesus. For many, the call comes suddenly and unexpectedly from someone going the wrong way on the freeway. They were just off going somewhere, thinking to return home. Are you ready for the call of the Great Shepherd? But we all have to die from something or else we would never be able to receive our glorified bodies incorruptible like His. So we don't have to quarrel with the messenger or the message for that matter. Whether we have seen many days already or we die in middle age or our years seem to be cut short. It does not matter. The Lord is going to send His messenger. The call will come one day. And are you ready? Check yourself to see whether you be in the faith when the shepherd calls. Amen. We are not going to take up an offering today, but we will leave the offering plate at the door for you each day. Uh, what I mean is we're not going to pass the plate from person to person. We'll leave it on the table and ask you just to drop it in as you leave. Is that okay with you? No. But we rise for prayer. Well, if you said no, we'd ask you to come up for prayer. <laughs> Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We pray for the whole church, that through it the goodness of God be shared and the good news of salvation joyfully be proclaimed throughout all the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for those who are in need, assured of the shepherd's care for all his sheep. Help us to meet the needs of those who travel with us through life as we are led by our good shepherd day by day. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the nations of the world, asking that still waters of peace flow around the globe and that there be goodness and kindness and mercy among all people. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our families and everyone in them. Together help us to follow the Good Shepherd as one flock in which all dwell together in love and unity. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We pray for those whose tables are set in difficult or challenging places, whose lives know want or discord or sadness or continuing illness. Especially do we lift up to you this morning Robin Hood, Reverend Rick McMillan, Louise O'Grodowitz, Jenna Abling, Tracy Stokes, Sherry Gebelman, Susan Jordan, Pastor Kelm, the Garza family, Sandy Green, Kathy Guswell, Johnny K. Newberry, Bernice Bates, and Karen Bowles. We also pray for birthday blessings on Julie Goss. Gently guide them with your rod and staff, Good Shepherd, and keep them ever with you. Lord, in your mercy. With gratefulness, we remember those who already dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Inspire us to pass through our earthly journeys with faith and hope as we heed the voice of our Good Shepherd and follow in His ways. Lord, in Your mercy. Yes. Taught by our Lord and trusting His promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, wholesome, and proper that we give thanks to you, our gracious Heavenly Father. For in your goodness you have given your only begotten Son for our salvation. By the guiding of your Spirit, direct our ways that we follow the Good Shepherd through all of our lives. Grant that we receive the body and blood of our Lord as a guarantee of our salvation and as a foretaste of the feast to come in the halls of heaven and the green pastures of your eternal kingdom. To you, O Father, be all glory, honor, and praise, together with the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. In the same way, when supper was ended, he took the cup. And after he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Take and drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sin. This do as often as you drink it to remember me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. The peace of the Lord be with you, always. Amen.
Almighty and ever-living God, our Heavenly Father, as part of your loving plan for us, you have again welcomed us to your table. We thank you for the blessing of this holy meal. As the bread was at one time scattered as seed upon the fields, and was harvested and was made one, so let your church be gathered together into one flock from the ends of the earth, until at last we taste the fullness of your great goodness in your eternal kingdom, where you live and reign with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good that you may do his will, working in us that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Go therefore, go therefore, go therefore, and wash your hands before getting in your car. If you are watching online and don't feel comfortable at this time attending in person, we ask you to please mail in your offering or tithing to 215 Rittenhouse, Houston, Texas 77076.